All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be chatting with an individual who has a very prominent fight going down at BYB 12 London Brawl, and that transpires on October the 16th. We've got the BYB Championship as well as the Police Gazette World Diamond Belt up for grabs when Seth Schaefer and Carlos Guerra get out there and test skills and happy to be welcoming Carlos onto the show for the first time. How's your day going so far, Carlos? Bienvenido, Carlos. ¿Cómo, cómo va tu día? Eh, mi día muy bien. Voy saliendo a entrenar justamente ahora. Preparo mi proteína y bueno, más que listo para ir a dar una guerra a Londres. He's saying that his day is going well. He just finished training. He's ready to take on his uh, protein and he's ready to, to, to wage war in London. Yeah, and it would seem like, at least based on what I'm seeing in some of my recent research, it looks like Thomas Blacombe has been big in the instruction end of things, but it looks like Miura House is the primary gym. Is that where you're mostly working ahead of this fight? ¿Cuál es el gimnasio o los gimnasios donde ahorita estás entrenando? Ahora estoy en un gimnasio que se llama Miura. Ahí va Julio César Chávez y muchas estrellas mexicanas. Es un gimnasio muy reconocido de México. Yes, he's at Miura, training with uh, the likes of Julio César Chávez and other famous Mexican boxers. Yeah, for sure. And does he have like a regular crop of like specific sparring partners that he gets in that work with, or just by virtue of it being that kind of gym, just like constantly people coming in and out, and no shortage of people to work with? Tienes, tienes algunas personas este, indicadas que haces sparring, eh, o, o por la razón que es un, un gimnasio tan grande y tan famoso, hay cuando entras a cualquier hora hay alguien que te puedes eh, eh, yo, yo ahora tengo tres coaches eh, a cargo de mí y eh, tengo cuatro sparring especiales para mí de mi peso, más altos, eh, más rápidos diferentes estilos, ya que al final yo siempre me paro para cualquier cosa, se llame como se llame mi rival, entonces estoy en el mejor lugar. He's saying that he currently has three coaches that he's working with, and he's got four sparring partners that are taller and faster than him, uh, you know, mimicking his opponent, Seth Schaefer, but that he he's ready to go against anyone at any time that goes in there. He's open to whomever, and, and as you said, by nature of the gym, there's no shortage. Yeah, for sure. Is that like a usual kind of practice, like talking about they're like curating the sparring partner dynamic to have like similar body types to Seth Schaefer here? Is that kind of like how all the training camps are set up, like trying to get in that work with either similar body types or sparring partners that maybe have similar stylistic tells to his opponents? La mayoría de tu, de tu entrenamiento y sparring ahorita está basado en, 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 la, en, lo fisi, en la estatura física de Seth. ¿Es, ¿Es lo que estás tratando de hacer o, o, o le das vuelta a cualquiera? ¿Cualquier sparring o, o te estás enfocando en, en su físico de él? Eh, yo, yo no sé, creo que él es de mi mismo tamaño, pero yo lo que voy con mis sparrings, justo, que yo to, con todos, más chico que yo, más alto, más fuerte, al final hay que prepararse, se llame como se llama mi rival, eh, O sea, yo soy Pero sí, sí, la velocidad, ¿verdad? La velocidad. Sí, sí, la velocidad, sí, yeah. claro, y contundencia. Yeah, he's saying that he feels that uh, he thinks that Seth is about his height, which I can confirm they're right about the same. And But he's saying he's trying to, you know, spar against uh, guys that are faster, but that at the end of the day, he doesn't care if they're taller, shorter, faster, slower. He's open to, you know, fighting any type of fight against any type of fighter, but that he is concentrating on the speed aspect um, of Seth. Oh, okay, fair enough. Understood on that end. But like speaking to the point of like being down for a lot of different combative kind of experiences, it seems like that's the case in terms of just the different sports where there's the experience and like obviously a lot of Muay Thai championship caliber experience around like 10 or so MMA bouts. Like when did the first, you know, idea of wanting to compete in bare knuckle kind of pop up? Like when did that initially get on Carlos's radar as something he wanted to partake in? Viendo que tú tienes experiencia en Muay Thai y, y artes marciales mixtas, eh, está preguntando, Dylan, que ¿cuándo es que tú pensaste en, en este boxear sí, a, a puño limpio? ¿Cuándo fue que se te metió en la cabeza de que, oye, yo pienso que puedo hacer esto? Uh, es gracioso porque mi coach, Jeremías, de Futures MMA en Estados Unidos, uh -huh. 
me, me, él siempre me llama, hey, hay una pelea de MMA, ok, vamos, eh, eh, Muay Thai, ok, vamos, y un día me dijo, eh, ¿quieres pelear sin guantes? Y yo no lo dudé, solamente fue como, ok, vamos, yo quiero pelear sin guantes, qué divertido, se escucha esto, y solo fue eso, una reacción de, o sea, siempre estoy listo para, no sé, no sabía que para cualquier deporte, pero sí, me gusta pelear. He said that uh, that his his coach uh, Jeremiah Rodriguez, that futures MMA in, in Florida, that he typically called them and advised them. I say I have an MMA opening or a Muay Thai opening, and at uh, at this point and at one point in time, he called him and said, "Hey, there's an opening for you to do bare knuckle," and he just felt that, "Hey, listen, it, it it'd be a fun thing to do," and and he really you know thought about it for a split second, but then said, "I'll I'll do it." And uh, now he says he has fun, and he's he's always open to any combat sport, not afraid. And, and uh, you know, he seems to he says he enjoys fighting without gloves. Yeah, it's curious because it's been around about a year and a half now since that bare knuckle debut was made, and a handful of fights have been put together since then. I guess like, what are the biggest differences between the Carlos Guerra that made his debut in? you know, BYB and also bare knuckle by proxy versus like what he brings to the table as a bare knuckle fighter heading into this next contest. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre Carlos Guerra que, que hizo su primera pelea hace que año y medio, dos años? Que hizo sí. su primera pelea en, en boxing sin, uh, sin guante al Carlos Guerra que vamos a ver en Londres eh, la semana que entra. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿Qué, qué has aprendido ¿Qué haces diferente? La primera vez que peleé, gané por knockout y me rompí mi mano. <ríe> porque justo no sabía que en el boxeo sin guantes uno no podía pegar así como con todo el punch. Ahora puedo decir que tengo más experiencia, soy más rápido, más fuerte. En el nuevo gimnasio que estoy haciendo en mi campamento, he aprendido muchísimo boxeo. He practicado toda mi vida boxeo, Muay Thai y artes marciales. Pero puedo decir que estos últimos tres meses he aprendido mucho y voy a hacer una pelea muy técnica y si Dios quiere voy a ganar por knockout en el segundo o tercer round y listo, vamos a través del cinturón a México. Ok, he's saying that, that uh, when it was his first fight that he broke, he broke his hand, he didn't know really how to punch or the differences in, in, in the punching techniques. He said that uh, fast forward to, to now, for the last three months, he's been working on honing his skills in boxing and different techniques, working with different fighters, and that, uh, you know, he's worked really hard, and uh, he actually called his shot, said that he's looking for the knockout in the second or third round, and that he's ready to go to bring Warren and, and bring those two belts uh, back to Mexico. Yeah, well, I mean, the track record would kind of underscore that for sure. I mean, there's demonstrable proof there already just with all wins up to this point by being virtue of like a KO or, you know, a TKO there. So, yeah, definitely proof is in the pudding on that one, it seems. Dice que, que, que él ve que tú tienes el poder de, de noquear ya que has noqueado, uh, creo que los cuatro de los, tres de los cuatro o cuatro de los cinco. Cuatro de los cinco. Cuatro de Yeah, cuatro de los cinco contrincantes y que, y que definitivamente puedes. Yeah, he's saying that no doubt that he's had a knockout up until he fought with you and that he's ready to do it again. Yeah, and just like what lessons were taken from that, you know, last go around with Scott McHugh, like what lessons were imparted from that particular fight heading into this one? Pregunta Dylan, que qué aprendiste de tu pelea contra Scott McHugh en Londres? Cuando fuiste, este, en, ¿qué fue en enero? Sí, fue en enero, 21. ¿Qué aprendí? ¿Qué, eh, ¿qué aprendiste? Ah, sí. fue, fue una pelea de cinco rounds. Él tenía mucha experiencia en boxeo sin guantes. Y justamente salí, salí limpio de la pelea. Me lastimé un poco la mano porque, como repito, peleo mucho y demás. Pero justo aprendí esa... Uh, más técnica, pelear con alguien que es muy experimentado siempre nos deja algo bueno y para mí siempre me deja experiencia y puedo decir que me dejó mucha experiencia. He said that that he was aware that Scott, you know, had a lot more bare knuckle experience than he did and he's saying that that Scott was a very technical fighter and that he knew his way around the ring and that he 
learn from that experience. He, he wants to become more of a technical fighter, not just a brawler, and that he feels that after fighting someone of his caliber, that it was a, a learning experience, and he, he benefited from it, and he's ready to show that, and along with what he's learning now at, uh, at his new gym uh, in the ring in a couple of weeks in a trigon. Yeah, that's awesome to hear, but speaking to you know, the benefits and everything. Like, I feel like there'd be a certain benefit to being part of a company like, you know, BYB that's actively collaborating with BKB, another large bare knuckle kind of promotion. Like, just from the fighter kind of perspective, how cool is it to, you know, see this and really just, you know, creating more options for you as the fighter? Right. They said, 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 Tiene relación con BKB y tiene la, la opción de mandar a peleadores a, a Londres y tal vez a otros países. Después, ¿eso es algo que tú, que te atrae a BYB o piensas que hay algún tipo de, de, de beneficio a pelear por una, una este, promotora tal? Creo, creo que es una buena asociación lo que tienen. Y claro, estoy peleando con BYB y BKB, bueno, B BYB yo represento, y claro que me gusta lo que están haciendo, mandando gente a Londres, ahora nos van a poner a pelear su campeonato en Londres, es, yo creo que como peleador en lo personal, para mí es muy emocionante, eh, pelear en otros países, representar mi bandera, y representar la empresa BYB. He's saying that he's very excited to, to have the opportunity to fight in London, and to represent BYB and to represent Mexico. And it's a great opportunity that, that doesn't come around often. And that he's, he's very, very happy with, with the chance. And, uh, and again, he said that he's ready to bring it to London. Yeah, it seems like there's a level of awareness to what your opponent, Seth Schaefer, brings to the table. Like, what were your thoughts on his BYB 9 performance where he got that fourth round stoppage over Toby? Misak, like, what did you think of in terms of like his overall skill set? Were you impressed by that fight? Were there particular things you noticed from you know that Seth Schaefer victory? Quedaste, quedaste impresionado tú, o qué impresión tuviste de que Seth este <clears throat> terminó a Toby Misak en el cuarto round de BYB 9? ¿Qué fue tu impresión? ¿Qué, qué pensaste tú? Ya que no sé si la viste en vivo, pero después que te ofrecimos la pelea Yeah, I mean, that's fair, keeping it consistent across the board. And yeah, fair to allocate it to the coaches more so on that end of things. But talked earlier about the fact that there's two belts on the line here, just the Police Gazette belt that has that rich tradition for, you know, generations and everything. And BYB's title very much representing, you know, the new guard and kind of 
the path going forward. Does Carlos kind of look at it from that perspective too, like the rich tradition of the Police Gazette belt and everything, but also the BYB belt kind of representing the future and everything like that? Dice, dice Dylan, está preguntando que si que es tu impresión ya de que tienes tú la oportunidad de ganar dos cinturones, la faja de, de Police Gazette que es una antigua, que tiene una traición muy rica, y también la, la faja de BYB, que sería la primera, y, y algo nuevo que viene a, al deporte de Bare Knuckle Boxing. ¿Cuál es tu impresión? Eh, obviamente, un cinturón ya es eh, impresionante, ¿no? Pelear por un cinturón. Y cuando me dieron la noticia justo del Diamond Bell, me parece que se llama, eh, obviamente fue como, wow, es más excitante, es más emocionante, y claro, más preparación por justamente, es muy importante este deporte y más representar a México, como lo digo, y ser el primer mexicano campeón de BYB y Diamond Bell, creo que es impresionante. Bueno, serías serías el primer mexicano, pero Patti es la sí. primer mexicana, ¿verdad? Ah, claro, bueno, sí, muy cierto. He was saying that uh, when he heard that it was for both belts and, and the and the you know one being the police because that that he was very excited that the opportunity to fight for any belt is important, but to fight for the first BYB Walter Wade Championship and to fight for the police Gazette is very very important and very special to him. And uh, you know I, I reminded him that Pati Juarez is the first Mexican to win the police Gazette belt. But he would be the first Mexican male uh, born in Mexico to win that that title. That has should he beat Seth in in London in a couple of weeks. So he he did say he was very excited and and, and at the opportunity. Hey, and, uh, hello. Okay, he's yeah, he's back. Oh, sí. Yo yo decía Patty justo es la primer mexicana, pero ahora voy yo como hombre. Yep. Ya les dije. Okay. Correcto. Nos Correcto. Nos vemos ahí. Dylan? Yeah, um, I appreciate the insights for sure and everything like that, and that really covered most of the territory I wanted to get into. I guess I just had one more question in relation to, you know, the mighty Trigon there, like just Carlos's thoughts competing in there. Like, how does that inform his style and, I guess, his approach as a fighter being in the dimensions of the Trigon? Bueno, ya, ya que has tenido varias peleas y experiencia... En el, en el triángulo, en el trigon de BYB, ¿Qué, qué, ¿qué sacas tú de esa experiencia? ¿Qué es diferente? ¿Cómo has, has podido acoplado a, a... ¿Cómo te has acoplado a, a pelear en el triángulo? Pues, ¿qué, qué has hecho? ¿Cuál es, ¿Cómo ha cambiado tu preparación? Um, oh, bueno, sé que el triángulo justo es más pequeño... Eh, es una pelea precisa e inteligente ya que justo no tenemos guantes he eh, agarrado mucha experiencia o sea, las cuatro peleas que he tenido en el triángulo justamente me han servido mucho y por algo he noqueado he ganado mis peleas contundentes he's saying that obviously it's a smaller area and that, that being a technician and be, uh, being a precise technician is very important and that, you know, he's not going to deal with the, the angles there, the corners, but that he definitely feels that having been in there four other times and and five total in bare knuckle have really prepared him to, to this point uh, where he's ready to get in there. But he is looking for a more technical fight, a precise fight, uh, brought up the fact that you have to be more so uh, precise in that you're not using gloves, and obviously one punch is all it takes in the right spot, right? Yeah, some big lessons learned from that first bare knuckle fight, as was alluded to earlier in the conversation. But yeah, a lot of appreciation for you know both of you guys for all the great insights today. But at the same time, I want to be mindful of everyone's schedule too. So to that point, is there maybe anything Carlos would want to add, kind of as like a parting thought as we're wrapping up here? Sí, dice que, que gracias por por, uh, entre, por la entrevista y, y este y dice que, que...
que tú quisieras decir algo para terminar ya la entrevista, quisieras darle gracias a alguien o decir algo. O... Eh, bueno, antes que nada, gracias por la entrevista de igual manera. Y bueno. Thank you for the, thank you for the interview. Sigue. Sigue, Carlos. Sí, y que va una guerra a Londres y voy a representar a México dignamente y nos vamos a traer ese cinturón a México y gracias a, mi, a, a mis coach de Miura en México, a mi coach de Futures MMA y a mi papá que también es parte de mi equipo, que es Carlos Guerra. Gracias a todos y bueno, estamos listos para la guerra. He's saying that, uh, that he's ready for war, guerra, with no pun intended with his last name, right? Yeah. He's ready for war, and, and he's willing to, you know, leave it all in there, and he's representing Mexico and BYB, and he thanks his coaches down in Mira, he thanks his father, who's part of his team, and, and, and Jeremiah Rodriguez, who's his uh, coach up here at Futures in, in, in Miami, and that he's excited, and, and he's going to bring it, and he's going to leave, leave everything in the Trigon, Come, uh, come the 16th of October, and he's ready for it. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting main event at BYB 12. And yeah, awesome to see the BYB and Police Gazette titles in this Seth Schaefer fight. And yeah, so much high stakes. And to that point, really appreciate Carlos coming on the show and giving his insights ahead of this fight. And yeah, thanks so much to both of you for all the help today. And hopefully both of you have a good rest of your day too. Anytime. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Gracias, Carlos. Después te hablo. Gracias. Saludos. Okay. Okay. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Bye-bye.